you've prepared your data for machine learning. What are the things you need to consider to train an effective model? This is a third video in a sequence on complete data science project walkthrough. And here we're going to talk about all the steps that you need to go through to train a production grade machine learning model and how to prove your stakeholders that your model actually works. For those who haven't seen the previous videos, we're using a real estate prices prediction project as an example as we go along. Before you do anything, define the optimization and evaluation metrics you'll be using. Optimization metric is a loss function that your model will train to minimize or maximize. It's an easy choice for classification task types because by default, most models will optimize cross entropy or log loss. In other words, you shouldn't bother. But for regression jobs, it is crucial to define the optimization function correctly. Because if your model will try to minimize mean absolute error, for example, that means it will be not very sensitive to outliers. And if your data has outliers, then you might want to select mean squared error as an optimization function so that it would penalize larger deviations higher. In other cases, you might want to select root mean squared logarithmic error, and this would be the perfect option for our real estate prices prediction example, because it penalizes under predictions higher than over predictions. If you intend to sell houses using the predicted prices, you would want the model to price them higher rather than lower. Another abstraction is evaluation metric, an interpretable measure of success something a client who is not a data scientist would understand. If you need your classification model to detect all the positive classes correctly, regardless of how many negative classes it misclassifies, then you might want to use recall as your evaluation function. A good example would be a metal detector frame at the airport, which needs to stop anyone even if there is a slight chance of steel being detected. And for regression models, a good evaluation function is mean absolute percentage error plus or minus 5% prediction error is easy to understand. Next important step, establish a baseline. The best baseline is the current status quo. How does the client currently makes an estimation and what is the average error of this estimation? If the experienced real estate broker estimates home prices with an average error of 15%, then that is your baseline. This is what you need to improve. In other cases, you might have a clear definition of done. Achieve a score higher than a certain threshold. Finally, if none of the above inputs are available, train and validate a simple model and use that as a baseline. Another important prerequisite is validation strategy. That is, which parts of your label data will you use for training, validation and testing your model? This depends on many things. The type of problem. When each data point in your data set is independent of one another, then a randomized split is fine. But if it is a time series problem and the current value depends on the previous ones, then a sequential split is required. The size of data. Large, statistically significant data sets can be split just once, and if both your splits contain all the types of examples in them, then you can trust this validation score. With smaller data, a cross-validation option is better. This involves multiple iterations of splitting your data into training and validation sets, which ensures that all the available data is going to be used for training, predicting and validating your model. Then an average of all the validation scores will give you a much more accurate result. I personally always try to go with cross-validation. Another thing to consider is the type and complexity of the model. If training a single iteration takes hours, then it might be prohibitively expensive to use cross-validation. Think neural networks. Lastly, target variable distribution is very important for validation. This is most relevant for classification test types. If your target variable is unbalanced, then when making a train and validation splits, you need to make sure that you have similar target distribution in both datasets. All these problems have been long solved by the community and convenient methods are available in the open source. I'll put the links in the description below. Now, how many splits? Is training and validation subset are enough or should you also have a testing dataset? In most cases, train well split is enough that is, if you use a default model without extensive hyperparameter tuning. But if you opt in for model tuning, then you might need all three – train, validation, test. The key idea is to ensure that the model generalizes well on new data. Using only train and validation sets may lead to a situation 
where both these sets influence the tuning process, which may potentially lead to subtle overfitting to these specific data distributions. The testing set provides the final unbiased model evaluation performance, thus giving it a more accurate measure of how it will perform in practical applications. Evaluation goes hand in hand with model training and may even become necessary much earlier during data preprocessing. Here are all the stages where evaluation may be used. Variable transformation options. If the nature of the variable is unknown, you might want to try different options and validate with the model which one produces higher accuracy for predicting your outcome. Same goes for feature engineering. You need to understand if the variable is useful before keeping it in the dataset. Feature selection, that is elimination of worthless data points by passing all your data through the model and then studying the resulting feature importances. Another cool option to understand if the feature is important or not is to randomly shuffle this feature and then train and validate your model. If the feature was important, then the score will drop and you can repeat this process for all the features and then sort their accuracies. Studying feature importances can also be useful for selecting the important features for their linear and nonlinear combinations when doing feature engineering. Lastly, you will need to evaluate your final model on the testing dataset. If you don't achieve a desired result, this step may revert you to assess all the decisions you've made previously. Business understanding. Make sure that you're solving the right problem. Data understanding. Make sure that you have what's necessary. Data transformation techniques used earlier in the process. Maybe you've messed up there. Model validation strategy. Does it reflect data peculiarities in the test that you are solving? Optimization metric selection. Did you make a right choice there? Once you as a data scientist are happy with the result, usually there is an additional validation step to make sure your customer is happy. This involves testing your model against a holdout dataset, which a customer reveals only at this step. And here you must be extra cautious. If final validation on new data produces bad results, this does not necessarily mean that you've done a bad job. Take a closer look into the validation data provided by the customer. It may come from a totally different distribution than the data that was provided to train the model. And the customer may or may not know and understand this. Maybe you've been provided with Canadian real estate market statistics for model training and when this model does not generalize on US real estate market, well, it shouldn't. All these things must be discussed and agreed upon at the beginning of any projects. Now let's continue to the last video in a sequence to discuss how to ship the model in production.